Talk Sports Chief Football Correspondent Alex Crook joins us uh, live this morning. Alex, good morning to you. Southampton reportedly set to insist that Jason Wilcox serves his 12-month notice period unless Manchester United increase their offer for the man, reportedly, they want to become their new technical director. Where are we at with this, mate? Someone in the know is required and you're that man. Uh, yeah, good morning, Simon. Uh, good morning, Darren. Nice to see you back in the studio. <laughs> I've just had confirmation, actually, literally in the last couple of minutes from somebody very senior at Southampton that Jason Wilcox has tended his resignation. So he's told them he wants to leave. He wants to go to Manchester United. On Southampton's part, they're insisting, as you say there, that he has a 12-month notice period. They won't release him from that notice period unless they can agree a fee with Manchester United, a compensation fee. They're looking for a significant fee. And I think they're disappointed with the way that Manchester United have gone about this. Uh, they're adamant that they gave United permission to speak to Jason Wilcox about becoming the new sporting director at Old Trafford on the condition that the release fee would be significantly in excess of his final year's contract. United have offered 12 months salary. Southampton say that isn't enough. That isn't what we agreed. So I think it's a game of brinkmanship right now. Oh, so, I mean, this is what happens, isn't it? So Wilcox is <coughs> not going to take it to the next uh, yeah. to the next uh, now, stage. Now you, need, now you need staff having release clauses. Do you have a release clause in your contract if, I don't know, TNT come in for you? I have absolutely no idea. That's is the it, funny is thing, though, isn't it? That? If, you, yeah, got, if yeah. you got offered a dream radio gig by a rival radio station, do, do you know if you could walk out tomorrow? There, or is, no do, there is no rival. There is no rival. Well, yes, no, but, but you don't know that. There's so, no offer that I would mean, tempt me. Alex is obviously working for someone in his kitchen back there at the moment. We don't know where he is. We miss him in the studio today. We wish he was here. Um, You're a good the, man, Mr. Crook. The, this whole thing is, is, look, Man United, I understand what they're trying to do, and I like what they're trying to do regards uh, Dan Ashworth, who I know well, and obviously now Wilcox. Go and do the deals. Get them done. Do it quietly. Let's move on. But the whole thing from Southampton about they don't like the timing of it. Well, it's a technical director, director of football. I'm not sure that, you know, when is the best timing? But I know the owner of Southampton. He drives a hard bargain. He'll end up winning here and he'll get a few extra zeros and a few extra payments and he'll be off and they'll replace him. That's how life works. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you, you would have to think, Alex, in an effort to uh, see it through, United will now... Quietly applaud Wil uh, Jason for what he's done, Jason Wilcox for what he's done, if he has tendered his resignation, as that might hurry along the process. Well, you'd have thought so, but you'd have thought that with Dan Ashworth as well, and there's no real sign of any breakthrough in negotiations between Manchester United and Newcastle. I think United have got to hurry up, really, with these appointments. It's such a, an important summer. So Jim Ratcliffe has come in. Clearly, that he's made reorganising the boardroom his priority. They've got Omar Barada coming in as chief executive from Manchester City. It's not a coincidence, by the way, that Jason Wilcox is top of their list for sporting director. Of course, Barada and Wilcox work very closely uh, at Manchester City. Wilcox, particularly crucial in the development of a, a lot of young players. And I think part of the idea that Ratcliffe has is that where at the moment Manchester City have stolen a march when it comes to players at academy level. They want United to be the team in the Northwest that young kids want to play for. They want to have their pick of talent. So it makes a lot of sense on that front. Obviously, Wilcox has had experience this season at senior level in trying to reshape Southampton, turning them into a team that were relegated last season into one that can challenge for promotion. Looks like that will probably be via the playoffs now. But United need Ashworth and Wilcox to start work straight away because they've got players to move on. In the summer, I think we're going to see significant uh, top earners removed from the wage bill. And they've got players to bring in as well. So I don't really think this helps anybody. And, and Dara's right. Ultimately, when it comes to Wilcox in particular, you're not talking telephone numbers here. You're talking a few quid. And I think United have got to pay it. It seems we need, Alex, we need a transfer market now for non-footballing staff, the way it's going crazy, you know. Um, Wilcox has had a dramatic rise over the last three seasons in particular, hasn't he? So um, do you think that's going to work, the Ashworth and him connection? How, how will that power structure work now at Man United? Who, who identifies the players? Who makes the final decision? That's who makes the phone question. calls to agents? Yeah. Who, makes the, yeah. who sits with players and does the contracts? Who does what, uh, who does what Alex? As it seems there's a lot of people well, going into United. Yeah, it does. And, and listen, I was told at the start of this process that maybe there could be two sporting directors to come in to work under Dan Ashworth. So uh, this might not be the last approach that United make. Dougie Friedman uh, was heavily linked. I understand there was some substance to that, but it doesn't look like it will happen now. 
But I think Ashworth ultimately will have overall control, assuming they can come up with a deal with Newcastle. Uh, Wilcox, from what I'm told, has a really good reputation in the game. He has a close relationship with a number of agents as well. So I think he's going to do a lot of the day-to-day dirty work, if you like. And then, of course, you've got Sir Dave Brailsford there as a sort of overlord of the rebuild of Manchester United. So you're right, there are a lot of cooks. And it is a meteoric rise. Actually, I spoke to somebody close to Southampton last night, and they were suggesting... It's a little bit surprising that the Wilcox is willing to go from being a top dog at Southampton I was just thinking to that. being a number two at Manchester United. But it is Manchester United, Derek. Oh, yeah. Sa- that little... well, calm down, Alex. Yeah, it, it's you know we're we're not going off history here. Southampton are still a big club, and he is basically running that club for Rasmus and the other owner, and then he's got the manager. So you're now going into a position. Yeah, you where you're telling part, me you, he wants to be part of no, this. No, hang, hang on. He's going to split his duties with another director of football or another technical director. So, so who Dan Ashworth's going to be his boss, and then he, he's got Brailsford, and then he's got the owners. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the money, Alex. I guess Man United are going to pay him a lot more money. I presume he's in the industry to go to a big club, earn more money. But for me, Southampton get promoted. It's a great club. Do you know what, though, Darren? What did they have before, Alex? I mean, I constantly think when I keep on hearing name after name, as you mm. rightly say, Darren, mm. a lot of people seem to be going into Manchester mm. United. What was it like before? Well, listen, you, you know my views on this. We, we've had discussions. Dara's been winding me up about the Glazer family and my disdain for them. The, the, the running of Manchester United over the last decade has been a shambles. And actually, this this is where Liverpool, um, as much as I begrudge saying it with Dara, sat there. They're doing it the right way because Jurgen Klopp is leaving. It's going to be very difficult to replace an iconic manager. They're getting Michael Edwards back to the football club, which I think is a very smart appointment. He knows the players. They trust him. He knows... Um, the owners as well. They've got Richard Hughes going in, who's proven himself in the Premier League. So they're making sure the boardroom structure is right before they even contemplate hiring a new manager. When Sir Alex Ferguson walked out the door at Manchester United, he took David Gill with him. They've never properly put in a structure for any manager to succeed. And that's why so many good managers, people like Jose Mourinho and Louis van Gaal, who won trophies all around Europe, they've not been able to succeed. They've not been given the tools to succeed. So I think Sir Jim Ratcliffe is doing it the right way, trying to get that structure in place, but they can't sit on their hands. They need to come up with a, an agreement with Southampton if they want Jason Wilcox, and obviously they do, and they need to come up with a deal to get Dan Ashworth as well, because there's no time to waste. This is going to take years and many transfer windows to yeah, get Manchester United now. back to where they belong. Of course. I don't suppose Southampton are that bit worried, or Newcastle are in any way worried about what Manchester United need or don't need. Um, <laughs> Alex, thank you for that. And Alex, bringing us that news, uh, it's our understanding now that Jason Wilcox, the man that Manchester United want from Southampton uh, to step in as a new technical director, has, and it's unconfirmed, but has tendered his resignation at Southampton. More Darren, myself, after this.